In this video, we're going to introduce the binomial distribution and have a look at calculating binomial probabilities. So the binomial distribution is a probability model that describes a game with two outcomes. So I'm just going to write that down. So describes a game with two outcomes. And we're going to call those outcomes win or lose. So it's a game where we either win on each turn or lose on each turn. For this binomial model to apply, we also have to play it a fixed number of times. So you commit to a number of turns that you want to have and you play it all of those terms. So we say that this is a fixed number of trials where a trial is one turn so for example you could commit to throwing a dice 20 times and if you roll a six that's a win if you roll otherwise it's a lose that's a perfect fit for a binomial model for a binomial model to work there's also a couple of assumptions that we need to make about the situation so assumptions the first assumption is that there's a constant probability of success. Constant probability of success. And the trials are independent of each other. The trials are independent of each other. Now what that means, constant probability of success, uh, there's the same probability of a win each time, which in the dice example, the probability of winning would be a sixth. The probability of throwing a six is a sixth. Uh, the trials are independent of each other. That means the outcome of one trial doesn't affect the next. So indeed, every time you throw a dice, it is independent of the previous throw. An example, and a pretty convoluted example of where that wouldn't be the case, is if the dice was made of some soft substance that misshaped the dice every time you threw it, then that would change the probability the next time. So if one of the corners was misshapen, it would make it more likely to land on a different outcome. That would be an example of where it was dependent on the previous throw. However, that's so unlikely and such an unusual situation, we can assume that dice throws are independent of each other. So let's see what this looks like in a practical context now. So take this example question here. A dice is rolled 20 times and we win if a six is thrown. Calculate the probability that we win a total number of eight times out of these 20 throws. Well, the key information that we're going to take from this, well, first of all, the probability of a win if we roll a six is a sixth. And the number of trials is 20 in this case. Now, a binomial model fits here because the game has two outcomes, win or lose, i.e. we throw a six or we don't. Has a fixed number of trials, we've committed to playing 20 times. For the reasons we just discussed, there's a constant probability of success when throwing a dice. And the trials are independent of each other, again we just discussed that. So the binomial model fits. Now a bit of a notation point here, this situation can be more neatly described using probability and distribution notation. So this whole situation here can be summarized as follows, like this, x, then a squiggle, then a b, 20, 1 sixth, where x equals number of sixes thrown. So I should probably describe what this actually means and explain it. So this here, x squiggle and b, means x has a binomial distribution. This 20 here means with 20 trials. And the sixth here means probability of a win equals one sixth. 
So when given that x squiggle b notation, that's what it means. X has a binomial distribution. 20 trials, probability of winning is a sixth. And I've had to define what x is. X is the number of wins, the number of sixes thrown. But I need to put that in context. So that there is the binomial model defined. So what I want to do now, the questions ask, calculate the probability we win a total number of 8 times out of the 20. Well, if x is the number of wins, that's asking us the probability that x, the number of wins, is exactly 8. And the way we calculate that, well, if we have 8 wins, that's a sixth to the power of 8. But we've committed a throw in a full 20 times, so that means there's a number of losses as well. So we must lose 12 times. If we've thrown a number of tw total number of 20 times and had 8 wins, we must have had 12 losses. But that's only one particular order. It can happen then we can have 8 wins, then 12 losses. Or we could have 7 wins, a loss, a win, then 11 losses. There's so many different ways that can happen. So many different orders those 8 wins and 12 losses can happen in. And the number of different ways it can happen is 20 choose 8 where this is always the number of trials and this is the number of wins and that finds us all the different combinations that these sets of events can happen in now as a small technical point actually if you put the number of losses instead 12 in this case you get the same answer because the combination function is symmetrical so let's put that into a calculator so put it in cal ordinary calculation mode and we've got 20 and the C button is above the divide sign 20 C 8 times 1 sixth to the power of 8 times 5 sixths to the power of 12 and that gives us the answer which is 8.41 times 10 to the negative 3 in this case so equals 8.41 times 10 to the negative 3 so that's how we do those particular types of question if I go back though and change that to 20c12 as I said we could do before Put the 12 there. I can see that I get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter if you mess up and put the number of losses instead. You'll get exactly the same answer as if you put the number of wins in the combination function. So there's no worries with that. But the calculator does a little bit more for you here. Because if we've got a binomial model, and let's go into st uh, distribution mode, mode 7 on the calculator. We're going to go for this one here, number four, the binomial probability distribution. And we're going to go for a variable. We'll discuss what list means at a later time. But now we'll go for variable. So x, the number of wins we want, is eight. The number of trials, capital N, was 20. And the probability of success was one sixth. So one fraction button, six. And there we go, we get the same answer. So remember going back, distribution mode, binomial probability distribution, binomial PD, variable, and input all the data. So X is the number of wins, capital N is the number of trials, and P is the probability of winning. And that'll give the same answer as we got before. Now, in an exam, I'd encourage you to do it using this particular calculator mode I've just shown you. It is necessary to know the algebraic method, as you could be given an unknown probability or something like that um, to find. So you could be asked to do it using the algebra, but I really would recommend, if you're not, just to use the calculator mode, unless asked to show full working. So that's a brief introduction to the binomial distribution. If you want to see more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please remember to click like if you like this video.